I'm here with the little starling this morning and it has grown a lot since uh, I left town just three, four days ago. Uh, and now there's only one. Unfortunately, the other one passed away. It wasn't eating as much as this one and there's really no other explanation um, that I know of why it would have passed away. Um, there could have been some kind of trauma when it was in the yard. Um, and honestly, I'm not sure that I can tell which one is which because in just those few days, they feathered a lot. So I hear a parent up in a, in, on the, on the wires up here. I think that might be right there. Um, you can see it far away. It just flew off. Um, and they're probably still hanging around. They must have had four babies in this clutch and this is the only survivor because two drowned one died of unknown causes and now there's this one and I think this one is pretty much ready to be out on the ground and ready to go and I'm hoping maybe next year uh, they won't nest here um, we'll get the, the holes plugged up so they can't make a nest and so then they'll have a better chance somewhere else uh, anyway I'm gonna give this one its breakfast and it sees the container and gets excited you know like hey where's my worms they're not jumping up she's not jumping up on my hand like she was before I left because she spent some time alone which is good because that keeps them wild and you want them to be more wild so that they'll go out and want to be a bird worm here and these mealworms I have to crush their heads because they are very uh, they have sharp jaws on them and I don't want anything to happen so here's the worm and I'm just gonna toss it in it's now feeding herself for the other day I had to feed them and you can see how quickly they grew now yesterday this one um, I very calmly did get this one to get onto my hand and once on my hand, um, it settled into like a lying position and snuggled up to my hand, which was very sweet, but it's still a wild bird. And still I can tell that it's a bit nervous of me. That's a good thing too. Uh oh, I threw that worm in kind of a precarious spot. We're almost out of worms. Now I, I bought, let's see, about five dozen super worms and about five dozen crickets and a couple dozen wax worms so I bought quite a bit because these guys eat a lot they might go through a dozen worms in one sitting and they eat a few at least a few times a day so whenever they're hungry so if you don't have your own bug farm, which I did feed them some of my own roaches as well, it can be very expensive to try and um, take care of a, a baby starling. And remember, I've only had them since last week, so if I had them from the beginning, it'd be quite an endeavor taking care of them, giving them the right uh, food. And if you look online, they suggest you give them mashed up cat food, but I don't, I guess if they're younger, maybe they'll eat that. I don't know if these guys would have ever eaten that because their parents were already taking care of them, feeding them, you know, bugs and they were a little bit older, so. Yeah, we gotta get you nice and uh, fed up so that you can come out into the yard and I'll watch and supervise and make sure that you're okay. Give you the last of these worms, eat them all. Now one thing I did notice on the bird that passed away is it did have um, wet around its butt and I'm wondering if it didn't have diarrhea, if it didn't get into something, I don't know. but. It also had a bit of a sneeze when I, right before I left on my trip, and my sister took care of them. She took really good care of them, and 
So she had this great big fancy cage. And so now the, the little bird, I wanted them to be able to practice flying and get their wings strengthened and learn how to perch, which they couldn't perch at the beginning. And now they can, or he can perch. There you go. There's a great example of being able to perch. So we accomplished some goals, however sloppy we were, didn't we? Will you let me put my hand up near you? Yeah? See, not running away, but I think we're going to have a very healthy uh, respect for maintaining distance from humans. And that's good. But I hope you'll come back and visit me. I do. So I'm going to let this one out of the cage. I'm going to open up this other door right here too. There you go, sweetie. It's a big world out here. But you've only been away for a couple days. I think you can get away from those cats now. You still have little baby lips in the corner. Corner of your lips are baby lips. Yeah. And when I talk to this baby, it raises the feathers on its head. And that's what the ducks do too. They either do it when they're nervous or, you know, they're kind of inquisitive. They're not sure. They, they raise the feathers on the tops of their heads. I don't know if I can reach in here and get this one onto my hand or not. And maybe just lift him out of the cage. Don't fly away. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, all right. Come right over here and then you can come out. This is a direct path right out of here. Come on. One thing I've noticed is that the baby seems to really listen to my tone of voice and, and I think that it's trying to pick up on the sounds that I'm making because I think it's about at the age where it should start making sounds but I think it's a bit confused because you know it was learning its parents sounds and now suddenly here I am with this completely foreign language but I can tell that the baby's listening and as I talk to it it uh, it does respond and does calm down and uh, like last night would fly right on, or get onto my hand so um, you want to come come here? Come on. Come on. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. That's not comfortable there. It's not. Yo. Come here. I went to the Museum of the Rockies in Bozeman this weekend and uh, they really uh, publicize it that birds are dinosaurs so I've been telling my friends for years that I have dinosaurs in my backyard uh, that's Freddie and my ducks I just call them little dinosaurs and you know science is pretty much <laughs> there that's what they're saying too that these are dinosaurs so Yep, they're just little dinosaurs, and it's just fascinating and kind of fun and imaginative to think of them as little dinosaurs, which is what they are. It's just that we're not used to that. We just think of them as birds, as something else, but these are the little dinosaurs, what they've evolved into. They're amazing. They've been here for so long, so long, millions of years. They're incredible. They can swim. They can dive. They can fly they're just amazing creatures with so much variety We almost had it. We almost came out. There you go. Put your other foot on there. Other foot. Come on. It's right. Yeah. It's 
right. Come on. Come on. There. Yeah. There you go. And, oh, yep. Doesn't want to come out of the cage. Feels safe in there. There we go. Yay! We're in the tree. We're in the tree. Look at you. Making bird sounds, that means that he or she is feeling more comfortable. There he is right there, he's still in the tree. Checking things out. Has to learn some things now. Missed a few days of learning there from the parents. You got this little bird. You got it. Must be scary being back out here again because I think four days to them is a long time in their development. They develop so fast. Now all I can do is sit and wait and see what happens, see if the parents come and if this one joins the others. Okay, we're about 10, 15 minutes in and the little one's still up in the tree in the same spot doing a bunch of grooming. Um, and there have been some house sparrows doing some mating rituals in the tree and doesn't seem to be bothered by that. So you can see him up here uh, preening his feathers because he needs to take really good care of his feathers for flying. Get rid of all that dandruffy cuticle. He's trying to eat some leaves on the tree so He's not really completely 100% sure on trees, but he's hanging on, the wind's blowing a bit, he's got a good grip on the branch. He flew up there, so he couldn't do that um, a few days ago. That's why he was so vulnerable out here in the yard. The only place he had for cover was, you know, something like this, um, ground cover, and cats come through the fence back there, and they walk along here. And that's where I found him, coming from that direction, and a cat came walking from that same direction. The other one was in the neighbor's yard, and her dogs were trying to get it, and it was only separated by a chain-link fence that it could hop back and forth through. It's been about 20 minutes, and uh, still doing some preening, and was just doing a bunch of wing stretching. So this, I mean, to me, this me, this tells me that he's getting ready and ready to fly and knows he has to do some maintenance. I'm hoping that soon um, there will be some sounds and perhaps some kind of reunion with uh, other starlings or the parents. So as many of you probably know, I'm just a duck person and not any kind of uh, starling or migratory bird expert. I have been making some noises that are kind of similar to what I've heard starlings do and now this little one has started vocalizing and I think that's good because maybe the parents will hear and uh, come down and be like where have you been? I would hope. So, that's good. I've been just whistling and I have no idea what I'm saying. I could be saying something offensive. I really have a lot of respect for birds and how the intricacy of their language and our uh, limited ability as humans to really understand their communication and its subtleties. So. As long as he hears that maybe there's somebody talking to him in the area and he's familiar with me, then maybe that will encourage him to to speak out himself.
Yep, I hear him talking a little bit. That's That cheeping sound is actually a, a sparrow. You probably can't hear this little one talking. It's very quiet, but he wasn't talking before, now he's talking, so that's good. Yep, there, that, if you caught that, that was a little bit of talking there. Yep. I, I just see it as a good sign that he's talking because if he wasn't talking, it's kind of like if a person was held in some kind of prison, they might be very quiet because they wouldn't know what to do and now he's talking so that's a sign to me that he feels more he feels safe he feels more free and content in his environment and that makes me happy he just turned around and faced me and then flew up a little bit and then flew back behind some bushes let's see if I can show you if you can see right there it's behind those bushes of wind came and the little one had to fly to another branch and it hopped around after that to different branches and it actually has moved higher into the tree and is right there so it's getting around really well this gives them a good vant. Oh, there's a really nice, loud, some loud sounds. Okay, so brave enough to call out. And hopefully the parents will come around and answer. All I can do is wait and see. Another starling, an adult, showed up, um, landed up in the tree. Uh, went next to the baby and the baby kind of freaked out a little bit and took off and flew to the top of the house and then that one chased it and it flew off so it's here's the one that was chasing the baby the baby is somewhere else now um, I have no idea what that means, but hopefully everything's going to be okay. And the little one is free. Seem to have very good uh, grasp on flying. It just it darted right across the sky. And could be in this giant tree now. And now it's just going to fade into the ocean of other starlings. And hopefully be out there somewhere living life.